So I put out a poll a while ago about whether to make a muzzle flash or breakdown of how I made the set extension shot. And it was pretty much tied, so I just decided to make the muzzle flash one. I checked back and I saw this. Anyway, here it is. Sorry for the wait. The first thing I did was to record the video. I actually had my brother Isaac fly our drone in a circular rotating shot. Our first couple of tries, I was standing out on our propane tank in our backyard, but we were shooting at just 1920 by 1080 and the drone was pretty far away. Hence, when it came down to separating me from the backdrop, well, just look for yourself. Can you distinguish? My computer couldn't either. On the next try, I decided to use our barn. The barn's walls, which for the most part are white, seemed like a great option since I was wearing dark clothing. However, my face just happens to be pretty close in color to the paint on the barn. White boys, we've been known so yeah, in the future, I'd probably use a blue screen, which we have now. I used some scrap boards we had lying around to walk on because if it had just been grass, it would have overlapped my boots and that wouldn't have been easy to key out at all. Having shot this, I moved on to After Effects. I basically used the rotor brush tool to do most of the work here. As I mentioned before, my face and the backdrop blended together into each other, but I was too stubborn to reshoot it and power through, perhaps to my detriment. It took probably around four to five different roto attempts just to get it looking semi-decent. I used a different roto for both the body and the head because they both required separate tweaking. I needed to track the scene next and wanted to try out the After Effects camera tracker. To my pleasant surprise, it did the job. I thought there must be a way I can put this data into Blender. Turns out there is. I talked about it in a previous video. I'll also link the tutorial on how to export that data in the description below. It's just a simple matter of downloading the add-on and then installing it in both After Effects and Blender. I exported the tracking data, launched Blender, and imported it. As you can see, the camera is already moving. I set the drone footage as a background image in the camera and put out some basic objects to check that the tracking was coming out correctly. I started modeling the walkway I was going to be on. The majority of that was just me messing around until I found something that looked cool. The backdrop started out as just a mountain range, but then I realized it wouldn't take as much work to just make a large flat object that took up most of the background. A big lake. That was mostly just a plane scaled up a bunch that utilized a bump map hooked up to a musgrave texture with a bit of adjusting to the principled material node. I made the far landscape with an add-on that basically takes data from Google Earth. You can search and find the landscape or city you want, and then it pretty much projects that onto a plane. Then you extrapolate height data from that area, and you get a fairly accurate version of what the land actually looks like. That's what I did for the mountains, and with a little adjustment, like cranking the roughness up, you get free landscapes to add to your renders. I would make a video about it, but CG Geek already made a great one, and I will link it in the description below if you guys are interested. For the close-up landscape, I used the landscape add-on that comes natively in Blender. The texture for this one is a bit more complex, but is basically a texture from polyhaven.com. I used a normal map, but what really made this texture was the displacement. As for the sky, after hours of research and cloud formations, laboring with volumetrics and Blender crashing 15 times, I finally made this work of art. Just kidding, I downloaded an image from pexels.com like a cheapskate. Moved them all back, scaled it a mile up, done. By this point, the 3D scene and 2D roto were almost finished. Now the easy part, compositing the two together. It's like, I did composite the two and was moderately happy with it, but it wasn't quite there. And now for something I didn't tell you guys about yet. I didn't originally shoot this scene with that backdrop in mind. Story time. Yeah, so I actually tried to make a different scene, messing around with it for a while, but I gave up on it because it wasn't that good. So that drone shot sat on my hard drive for upwards of two months, collecting metaphorical dust. Then I thought, I want to make a video about set extensions, but I'm too lazy to shoot anything else right now. Solution? Use old video. So that's what I did. With that in mind, you might begin to understand what went wrong here. I thought, I can get away with making a sunny landscape using an element shot in the shade? Nope, I uploaded it to a Discord channel so I could get a little feedback, but uh, mostly bask in praise, to be honest. Kind of glad I did though, because someone rightly roasted it for being inconsistent. By the way, I was in no way bribed to say this, but shout out to EdgeVFX's channel in Discord, which he has listed in his videos. Hop on, it's a great time. Lesson learned? Great kid, don't get cocky. I jumped back into Blender and relit my scene. It was already looking much more consistent. I then used a feature in Blender that I found super useful lately. It's called the Mist Pass. It basically tells the camera, the farther something away is from it, add more opaqueness. It just acts like a cheap and easy version of putting a big cube into your scene and adding a principled volume. Trust me, it saves render time. Then I tweaked it a little in After Effects, matching the color of the elements, adding glow, film grain, and a bit of chromatic aberration. What I like to do with pretty much every render now is to soften it with a lens blur and then sharpen it back up 
with a sharpen effect. I think it just takes away a bit of that digital feeling. I colored it in Premiere Pro. Generally, I set the shadows to be cooler colors like teal and basically just made the highlights a bit warmer. All right, that was just a brief breakdown of what it took to make the set extension shot. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to make more stuff in the future. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below and until the next one, this is VFXpert. God bless.